Good afternoon, everybody in Techopia land. And thank you very much for those of you that's joining us live right now, as you might be enjoying lunch or it might be dinner if you're watching this from overseas or it might just be early morning for that matter. Uh, if you're listening to this a little bit later on or watching this later on, thank you very much for joining us. As you already know, Techopia is dedicated in sharing more about what's happening within the tech industry right here in Ottawa and also beyond. Uh, the wonderful thing about our tech industry, as you already know, it's evolving so uh, rapidly and we are very fortunate right here in Ottawa to be right in the epicenter of some amazing technology and today uh, we are going to talk about revolutionizing the concrete industry now you wouldn't necessarily always expect that uh, in a tech show but that's exactly what we're going to do today with me here today a CEO and co-founder of Geotech Ali Alizade uh, thank you so much for making the time to join us today and <laughs> we are we're going to start things up very simple. We're going to start off by talking about what is the difference for of course because for us to really understand what Geotech does, we need to define what's the difference between concrete and cement. So let's start there. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me, uh, Carla. Well, um, concrete is a very interesting material. It's actually the second most consumed material by humans after water. Uh, 20 billion tons of concrete is produced annually in the world. Um, and it's an uh, interesting material. It, it you get cement powder so these are uh, the, the materials are produced by cement manufacturers. Then you mix that with aggregate, which is sand and gravel, and adds, add water and some other chemicals to it. And it, it forms a liquid mixture. And this liquid mixture is called uh, fresh concrete or, uh, or concrete that is uh, already mixed together. And over time, it transforms from liquid to, to solid. And that's what we see in buildings when they are built. So that's the difference between cement and concrete uh, in, in very, very uh, basic terms. <laughs> And, and I think you need to keep that very simple for us because uh, what your company does know is really is re really revolutionary because um, you are providing data and input uh, into this realm and we use concrete and cement and, on so many places. So explain to us a little bit. Firstly, uh, the how Geotech came to fruition and then maybe what it is exactly Geotech does. Uh, sure. Uh, my uh, my business partner, Puria, uh, and myself, we were doing our PhDs uh, back in 2009 when we, we graduated. And we did a lot of work in the, in the deep science and, and knowledge behind the concrete uh, materials and corrosion uh, in general. And we saw there's a huge gap between what we're doing in academia and what's happening in industry. And that's that was the, the motivation for us to start Geotech and bring some of that knowledge to the industry by building innovative tools and devices and technologies that can be used in the actual practice and help uh, structures become safer and more durable. So that's how we started Geotech in 2010. And uh, over the past seven years, we've, uh, we've innovated uh, different types of uh, t testing technologies from lab devices that can be used to do, assess the permeability of concrete. Uh, we've uh, designed technologies that can be used by engineers to make uh, accurate inspection of infrastructure such as bridges. And uh, over the past few years, uh, we have introduced wireless sensors that can be placed in the concrete for real-time monitoring of uh, concrete properties um, during the construction. And after that while, the concrete it is in service. Oh, okay. awesome. Now, um, so we spoke about what is, <laughs> and if you just joined us and you're wondering what are we talking about, we're talking a little bit about concrete today and we're talking about Geotech and that is once again revolutionizing this industry. Maybe you can share with us a little bit um, what is smart concrete and what is the benefits of smart concrete especially to the construction industry? Well, uh, it's, it's a very general idea and it's a vision that we are uh, pushing really hard to get to that uh, you know, one day soon. But we started with wireless sensors uh, to begin um, you know, revolutionizing the concrete industry. We have developed over the past few years uh, significant IP around monitoring concrete properties, detecting uh, cracks, uh, detecting um, hardening and strength development in concrete. And we put all that IP into a, a small form factor that can be embedded in the concrete and we call that smart concrete sensors. So we have a smart rock, we have blue rock and recently smart concrete sensors. These are wireless sensors that can be placed in the concrete when contractors build a new structure and uh, it's completely embedded in the concrete and after that at any point in time uh, contractors or other operators can use a mobile phone uh, to communicate wirelessly to the sensor, uh, collect data, 
and in real time make a decision on the go that, okay, I can um, remove form work, or I can open traffic on a concrete pavement, or I can stop heating in the winter time. And um, it helps them optimize their schedules more efficiently. But the idea of a smart concrete is, is more than that. We want essentially to make job sites more connected, structures are smart, in the sense that all the um, contractors, operators, owners, uh, engineers, uh, and uh, even people who are living in, in the structures can get information about what's happening in the structure at different stages of, uh, of that building's life, uh, life cycle so that they can optimize their schedules. And, uh, and it's not just that decision making. All this data is sort of backed up on the cloud and on the cloud we can do data analytics and offer more value to the owners and operators of, of the buildings. So we can predict things that uh, may happen in the future and inform uh, owners on, um, for example, that a repair that may be needed to be done 10 years from now on a bridge. Um, or that you know, a contractor would know that Two days from now, they can they can go to the next floor and build the next floor. Mm -hmm. So that way, they they save a lot of time and money on their projects, and obviously that can also lead to improving the quality of structures and long-term sustainability of uh, uh, of buildings that we live in. Wow, that's phenomenal. Well, that sounds that sounds pretty as a an obvious choice to start incorporating that as a construction company or a developer or a builder for that matter, or even a city uh, to just once again maintain and and provide that solid platform on so many levels. So maybe you can share with me, um, now that you've been in this industry, not just researching it, but also working with uh, you know, so many experts in the industry, do you, you obviously are trying to get, create that data and create that information. Um, I would say everybody wants this, but there's obviously still some pushback. There would still be some delays within the industry to try and move this forward. What do you see are those delays and what do you see can be done to kind of maybe help speed things along? Uh, sure. Um, construction industry is a very interesting industry. Um, although it's one of the largest industries in the world uh, and the oldest ones, uh, it is a bit conservative, uh, I would say. Uh, and, and it's it's mainly because of the liabilities associated with what's happening in this industry. When there's a building is built or a structure is inspected, uh, there are different parties that are that may be held liable for that structure. If something happens, uh, you know there are designers, con contractors, um, engineers, and operators and inspectors who may be on the line. So that's why there are a lot of regulations, uh, standards, building codes. It's kind of like medical industry where, where everything is regulated. It has to be approved by building codes. It has to be specified by engineers. Someone has to do quality assurance, quality control. And because of that, if there is an innovation, it it is not adopted right away. Unlike the IT world, where, where we have a new app coming out and everybody's using it, or a new chipset comes to the, to the market and all the, uh, the electronic designers would use it. In this industry, things would take their time until it becomes approved by a building uh, authority, and then engineers can follow that uh, essentially code to specify th something that is new. So early on, we didn't really uh, understand this challenge. So we, we started with very, very innovative uh, technologies and we wanted to change the concrete industry with those technologies, but it was way ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. So we, we went back a little bit and we started pushing the boundaries as opposed to going something beyond the boundaries of the construct industry. Mm -hmm. So for example, the sensors that we have are complying with, with the current standards and regulations, but is, is done in a way that is more advanced, more uh, seamless and easy to use, and uh, the data integrity and uh, communication is, is built into one, one single platform. So that, that way we are uh, giving a solution to engineers that can follow uh, based on their current codes, but at the same time they can push the boundaries. Um, but so, so we think that this will change. You know, there's no no choice but to uh, to listen to the end users. Essentially, when when the end users who are uh, the owners and maybe the build, people who are living in the buildings are are demanding for new technologies, uh, the building codes and authorities uh, would have no choice but to to make their processes faster. Mm -hmm. 
So that's one way of, of pushing the boundaries in this conservative industry. And for that to happen, we're also involved in standard committees and building code committees uh, to work together uh, with the other um, experts to make sure that what we are doing complies with, with the current standards and regulations. And at the same time, we can step by step advance um, uh, the industry by introducing new technologies in the market. Yes, it's, it's, it's a very um, um, uh, interesting path that you need to follow in, in having your technology align with the regulations within that specific industry. So uh, I love the fact that you're allowing them to use your technology, abiding by the regulations, but also providing them that um, taste of what can be achieved with technology that provide a little bit more than they, w they are used to. So that's amazing. Um, Ali, maybe you could speak a little bit too about one thing that is pretty awesome um, as an Ottawa company, and you were the only Ottawa company uh, in this recent cohort that went to the Accelerator C100, uh, which is well known to have companies like MindBridge and Fluid Survey and even Shopify. And what's interesting about this is that you need to be uh, you need to be chosen by alumni uh, to be even considered to apply for that. So. Maybe you can share with us a little bit as the only Ottawa company there this year in the summer. What have you learned from that and what have you taken away for Geotech? Yeah. Um, it, it was an honor to be selected, to, you know, first of all. We, we are one of the, I would say, few companies who are um, out of that norm of, um, I guess, I, uh, IT companies or software companies that are advancing in their domain. So we are in a very different industry. And um, you know, to, to be selected by the C100 as an advanced uh, or innovative startup or scale-up uh, was a big honor. But um, the, the event, which only takes two days uh, in, uh, in Silicon Valley, it's, it's a great event. There's a, uh, an, a, an excellent set of speakers and presenters and mentors that are selected uh, to give talks in this uh, two-day um, sort of session uh, and mentors that would work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, for example, we had a mentor, a VP of Marketing from uh, Carbon, which is, a, um, which is a 3D printing um, uh, company um, in, in Silicon Valley. And um, so apart from the speakers that, uh, that that, uh, are very inspiring and uh, the mentors that we get to discuss what we are challenged by on a day daily basis. Uh, there's also the opportunity to network with local uh, people in the Silicon Valley area. So we made arrangements to meet with uh, with other people in the within the same industry and also uh, people who are coming from uh, from the investment side, from the uh, business side, and make network. And we're uh, we're actually using some of those networks right now uh, to to see can we expand on different business opportunities? Can we can we learn from what's happening in the Silicon Valley and try to apply it in our industry uh, so it was a it was a very very great networking event and on top of that the uh, speakers that we had the opportunity to meet with was was uh, was an excellent set of speakers wonderful so last but certainly not the least and and this is kind of coming bringing this whole conversation to conclusion and if you're watching this once again you're watching techopia um, you can join us on facebook each and every single week uh, today we are here at krp properties which is so much more than space uh, once again, an opportunity to showcase a key uh, influencer and also amazing CEO here within the tech community. Ali, maybe you can share with us a little bit, what does the future look like for Geotech? Okay, uh, we are uh, expanding rapidly, actually. We, we have 100% uh, gross year over year. Uh, Tina's growing and uh, Otto is, is um, a very excellent community to attract uh, new talent and, and, uh, and grow a, a company that, that can be impactful worldwide. Uh, for us uh, is, is to continue the path that we have started on Smart Concrete. Right, so the vision that we have, as I shared that with you, is, is to be able to uh, give access to information to all the stakeholders that are involved in the process of construction and after that, while the concrete is, uh, is in service. We recently introduced a new model uh, that we partner with a uh, veteran expert producer, for example. Uh, in Ottawa, we have uh, Tomlinson as our partner that who are offering a smart concrete to the contractors. So they, they can now offer the traditional concrete with a sensor in it to the contractors who want to get real-time information on their job sites. So this is already revolutionizing the industry as we speak, but one day we, we believe that concrete would not be 
be a, or still be a commodity anymore. It will be a material that brings value to producers, to contractors, to owners. And that way, the collection of data uh, is, is something that we would look at it as the future for Geotech, to be able to, to run uh, analytics on this data and offer more value to even government owners and say, look, the quality of concrete in this city is not uh, so good, so you may need to prioritize your budget within 10 years. Mm -hmm. And that way create more knowledge and wisdom for, for, the, uh, uh, for the owners and operators of the buildings. Well, that sounds exciting. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for sharing this and thank you for, <laughs> you put a whole new spin on concrete and cement. So thank you so much for that. And we're so proud of having you once again, part of the Ottawa community and we wish you nothing but the best for the future. Thank you very much for joining us today, guys. Make sure you check out techopia.ca for more information and to stay up to date and join us next time here on Techopia Live. Bye for now.